Hello, we are going to discuss Savain's formula for reverberation time. What is Savain's formula? It's an empirical formula that gives you the reverberation time of a hall in terms of the volume of the hall and all the absorbing surfaces, area into their absorption coefficient. Now, uh, Sabine have made a lot of uh, assumptions. One of them is that when uh, there is a sound source in the hall, the sound energy distributed throughout the hall will be a constant. This is uh, not the case actually. So, Sabine's formula is considered as an empirical formula. So, how are we going to derive this formula? What is reverberation? Reverberation is the sustenance of sound in a hall due to multiple reflections. Sound from a source will reach the same point via different paths by multiple reflections, for example, from the ceiling, from the floor and uh, from different walls or different surfaces. But uh, all these sound of the same note reaching the same point will take different time because they take different paths. So sound traveling in longer paths will take longer time. But uh, the difference will be like fractions of seconds. But still, because of this, the sound will seem to be sustained. And this sustenance of sound is called as reverberation. And the time taken for that, how long this sound remains audible because of this reverberation is called as reverberation time. We'll say the time taken for sound to fall from its uh, maximum energy to one millionth of its maximum energy. So from the maximum energy to one millionth of the value, the time taken for this will be called as reverberation time. In other words, sound should drop, sound level should drop by 60 decibels. So if you calculate this, uh, sound intensity level is given as uh, 10 logarithm of I by I naught in terms of decibels. So if you calculate that uh, the intensity is dropping by 1 millionth, the sound intensity level will be dropping by 60 decibel. For example, if the hall has a 100 decibel sound level, from there the time it takes for the sound level to drop by 40 decibels will be called as reverberation time. To have a formula for reverberation time, we have to consider the growth and decay of sound energy in the hall. Now how does sound energy grow? Imagine we have a power source, a sound power source like a speaker P of power P. Say if P is uh, 40 watts, then this power source is giving us an energy of 40 joules, sound energy of 40 joules every second. And uh, let's say all the surfaces in the room, the hall, they absorb energy, they will have something called as absorption coefficient A. This absorption coefficient is the ratio of energy absorbed by a surface to the total energy falling on the surface, total sound energy falling on that surface. So we have different surfaces and uh, they are absorbing sound energy. So this P minus the total energy absorbed this difference will be is what is left in the room for every second and this will add up to the sound energy already there. So this will result in the sound energy growing. So this will be equal to DE by DT. This is the rate of change of sound energy in the room. Let's consider it's growing, it's increasing. So that will be P minus the total energy absorbed. Similarly, from this equation, we can get uh, the decay. See, for a time, the sound energy will increase. After that, it will reach a saturation value. It will reach a maximum value. Let's call that as uh, EM, the maximum sound energy in the room. If I switch off this power source, if I take this power source, then the room is now only absorbing sound energy. Now, this DE by DT will be decreasing energy because of the absorption. The energy is absorbed, so the DE by DT will refer to the decrease in sound energy and that will give us the DK equation. Once we have this DK equation, we can uh, find how long it will take for the energy to go from the maximum energy to 1 millionth of the maximum energy, 10 power 6, 
and that time will give us the reverberation time. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to consider a power source and the total absorption in the room. We will start with the total absorption in the room. So we are going to find the total absorption in the room, right? The how all the surfaces, different surfaces with different absorption coefficients will uh, absorb sound energy. We are going to consider a small element. Let's say uh, this is the wall, actual wall, and we are considering a small area ds we will see what is the total sound energy falling on this wall this portion of the wall in unit time and how much the of that energy will be absorbed by this wall let me show this here so now this element is perpendicular to the plane of the board so this is my ds a element which is perpendicular and this space here is my room so i'm going to consider a small volume element of the room say dv now let this dv be at a distance r from the center of this area ds so this distance be r uh, let this r be at an angle theta from the normal to the wall so i'm considering the wall surface so let the volume element i consider be at an angle theta from the normal now i want to find this uh, dv what i'm going to do is i'm going to assume that uh, the energy density, sound energy density in the room is E and that is constant throughout the room. This energy density is actually the total energy per unit volume. I want to find how much sound energy is there within this volume element dV, which will be dV into the energy density. So this is the volume of the volume element and this is the energy density. The product will give me the energy contained within dv. I'm going to find that out and I'm going to find out how much of that energy is reaching this ds surface in one unit time. So we start with uh, finding out dv. To find dv, let's consider this dv. So this is br and let this stretch be dr, a small increment along r and let this span here be d theta. So this angle is theta and this span here is d theta and this span from the vertical like this side this span let that be d phi so i'm next i'm going to draw the volume element again slightly bigger here so my this span here will be this so this is this r and this angle is d theta this span here is r d theta this will be dr and uh, this span here which is here this span here will be this this distance from the normal will be r sin theta as you can see we have a right angle triangle here so this is theta this is the opposite side and this distance is r the hypotenuse is r so this is r sin theta and if this span is d phi then this distance will be r sin theta d phi now we have this volume element which we can uh, consider as a cuboid so the lines will be an arc because it's very small we can consider to be them to be straight lines and the volume element will be a cuboid so the volume of this cuboid will be dv is equal to this into this into this here we have r and we have r another r here so it will be r square and we have a sine theta so r square sine theta dr d theta and uh, d phi so this is the volume of the volume element we considered now we're going to find how much uh, energy will be contained in this volume element that's a easy one the energy contained in the volume element of volume dv sound energy will be the energy density into the volume the volume is r square sine theta dr d theta d phi so this is the sound energy contained in the volume small volume element dv now this energy is uh, spreading in all directions from this dv element this energy is uh, traveling in all directions we want to find how much energy comes to our surface ds i'm going to consider solid angle now solid angle let's start with plane angle see a uh, plane angle is the angle subtended by an arc from a point so you consider an arc you consider a point 
this arc is at the distance of r, the arc length is L, then the plane angle is theta. We can define theta as L by r. Now L and r are both having the dimensions of length. So theta will be a dimensionless quantity, but the unit of theta will be radians. So this is called as plane angle. Similarly, the angle subtended at a point by an area, any area, I am sh sh choosing a couch surface area here. So the angle subtended by this entire area, this angle here will be called as the solid angle. Like uh, you can imagine the cone, the angle subtended inside the cone, the entire thing, not any between any two lines, the angle between the entire cone will be a solid angle. Now solid angles are defined, let's say this is omega, solid angles are defined as the area subtending it to the perpendicular distance from the point. Now we should have, if you have a by r, like in L by r, we'll have a dimensional quantity because a has the dimensions of length square. So we'll define solid angle as a by r square. So now this is dimensionless. The unit of solid angle is steradians. So now I am going to consider the solid angle. The solid angle of an entire sphere will be 4 pi. That's easy. The solid, the plane angle contained in a complete circle will be 2 pi. How? Because the arc length is 2 pi r, the distance is r, so theta is L by r, 2 pi r by r, which is 2 pi radians. Similarly, if we consider a sphere, the solid angle subtended in the sphere will be the area of the sphere which is 4 pi r square divided by the distance square r square which is 4 pi. This is 4 pi steradians. So the solid angle subtended inside a sphere is 4 pi steradians. So I consider my dv volume element, the small volume element I consider. The sound energy inside this volume element is spreading in all directions. You can say it is spreading as a sphere. So it is spreading in a solid angle of 4 pi. We can calculate the energy, the energy going in unit solid angle. It's very simple. We just divide the total energy coming out of the volume element by 4 pi. So this energy divided by 4 pi. Now this is the energy per unit solid angle. The sound energy coming towards unit solid angle will be given by this E r square sin theta dr d theta d phi by 4 pi. Now I want to know how much of this energy comes to my surface ds. For that I have to consider, I have to find out what is the solid angle subtended by my surface from this volume. So we have a dv volume here. What is the solid angle subtended by my surface? So this solid angle, what is this called? This is d omega. What is d omega? I have to find the solid angle. d omega into this will give me the energy coming towards my surface area. But you see, in the definition of solid angle, the surface area is perpendicular to the length between the point and the area. My, my surface is not perpendicular. So I will take the projection of the surface which is perpendicular to the solid angle. So this projection, if this angle is theta, if this angle is theta, then this angle is also theta, then this projection will be ds cos theta. So this area, the projection of my area in the direction of the solid angle subtended at point V will be ds cos theta and by the definition d omega is uh, the area divided by distance square. The distance is of course r, right? We have a small difference here which we can neglect considering the large distance and the small areas and volumes. So I can say the solid angle subtended by my area at dv, d omega is ds cos theta by r square. So if I multiply this with the energy per unit solid angle, I will get how much of the sound energy from dv is reaching my ds area. So I just multiply this with here. This is 4 pi. So 
energy reaching the surface ds will be e r square sin theta dr d theta d phi by 4 pi into the solid angle so this is the energy per unit solid angle into the solid angle subtended by the surface which is uh, ds cos theta by r square so you can cut the r square here so this e sin theta cos theta dr d theta d phi ds by 4 pi is the sound energy reaching ds area so this is the sound energy reaching ds from dv volume what is the sound energy total sound energy reaching the ds surface from the entire room in unit time in one second how much sound energy reaches from the entire room for that we have to integrate over dr d theta and d phi what are the limits of integration we'll uh, keep this equation here what are the limits of integration so look at the diagram here so we have ds the volume element is considered here the dv volume element at a distance of r now sound has a velocity v in air velocity of sound is 330 meters per second which means any sound from 0 meter to 330 meter will reach this area in one unit time so the distance r if you want to find the total energy reaching this area in unit time then the limit for the distance r is from 0 to v where v is taken as length because it's unit time so v is 330 meters so that is the distance right so we have to take r the limit for r must be from 0 to v so all the sound energy from 0 to v distance will reach this area in unit time any sound energy beyond 330 so some sound energy in 331 meter will reach this area in the next second not the first second now i want to consider the entire room so my dv volume element here is having an angle of theta if i make this theta to go from 0 to pi by 2 i will have a sector of radius r which is uh, equal to v the maximum radius is v and if i rotate this sector we have d phi here so if the d phi is allowed to rotate from 0 to 2 pi then we get an hemisphere an hemisphere of radius v all the sound energy within this hemisphere will reach my ds area in unit time so the limit for r is 0 to v the limit for theta is 0 to pi by 2 and the limit for phi is 0 to 2 pi with this we will integrate our uh, sound energy we will get the total sound energy reaching the ds area in unit time so this let, it, let me put this as uh, e ds once again but this is the total sound energy reaching the ds area in unit time so which is the integration we will have a triple okay i will just write them separately so i have a e ds by 4 pi these are all constants so i have integral 0 to v dr integral 0 to pi by 2 sin theta cos theta d theta and integral 0 to 2 pi d phi so this is the limits so this will be e ds by 4 pi this will be v of course integration of dr is r apply the limit is v minus 0 so this will be v this we have sin theta cos theta 2 sin theta cos theta is sin 2 theta so you can use that identity here so this will become sin 2 theta by 2 so when you integrate that it will become minus cos 2 theta by 4 and when you apply the limits pi by 2 and 0 you will get a value of 1 by 2 and this d phi integrated is phi applying the limits 2 pi to 0 it will become 2 pi so this represents the total sound energy reaching ds area in unit time so we can of course cut this uh, 2 here and cut the phi here so we will have e v where v is the velocity of sound ds this is the area by 4 so this is the total sound energy falling on the ds area in unit time if i multiply this with the number a where a is the absorption coefficient the percentage of sound energy absorbed by the surface ds 
then this will give me the energy absorbed by this ds area the total sound energy absorbed in unit time in one second by the ds area will be given by multiplying the total energy falling on it into the absorption coefficient this is what we are looking for so now this is for only the ds area if i want to consider the entire room i simply have to expand this for the entire room now i i cannot do the integration here because i might have in a typical room i will have different surfaces like the ceiling the floor the walls the tables and chairs the furniture whatever it is the windows so we will have different surfaces so typically we will consider each surface the area of each surface let's say s the surface area of each surface exposed to the sound energy into their absorption coefficient we have to find this product for all the different surfaces and the sum over them so the summation of different surfaces into their absorption coefficient into this e v by 4 this will be the total energy observed in unit time this is the total sound energy observed in unit time it will be the energy density in the room velocity of sound into the sum of the product of the different surface areas into their absorption coefficients so this is what we are looking for what is the total sound energy observed in unit time in the room